Hey, Larkin Rose here. Did you know that there is a species of snake that comes only in the Superstition Mountains of Arizona? And not only is it bright blue, but it glows in the dark. And it glows in the dark as a result of the fact that its diet consists entirely of a certain kind of phosphorescent cave fungus. And did you also know that I totally made that up? That wasn't at all true. The topic of the video today is who can you trust uh, when it comes to people making claims and well this person says that and that person says this and I don't know who to believe and don't know who to trust. And my answer may not be what you would expect it to be because my suggestion is the vast majority of the time don't trust anybody. And you might assume that by that I mean distrust everybody, but I don't mean that either. The vast majority of the time don't distrust everybody either. So what the hell am I talking about? <laughs> when people hear some new claim that they haven't heard before, they haven't seen the evidence, they haven't looked into it, they just heard somebody claim, hey, did you know that there's a glow in the dark snake in the superstition mountains we have this irrational tendency we as human beings of wanting to quick decide whether to take that claim and put it in the category of I don't believe that that's not true or I believe that that's true and as soon as we stick it in one of those categories then we want to defend whichever category we put it into if I decide well that's true and then I tell somebody else and they say, I don't think that's true. It is. It totally is. Like if you, if I didn't tell you that I just made the thing up about the snakes and you went on and, hey, did, told somebody else, hey, did you hear that there's a species of glow in the dark snake? And they said, uh, what? I don't think so. I've never heard of that. If you vehemently said, no, it's true. Why would you think that? Well, because I heard it from somebody I trust. Okay, but that isn't the same as you actually knowing something to be true. That's you deciding who to trust. And instead of relying on evidence and logic and wanting, like, some backing for any claim you hear, that's you being eager to throw the claim into one of the two categories of, I think it's wrong, I think it's right, and then doubling down on that when challenged on it. And... That's not how logic works, and it's not how science works. Sadly, it's how most people's brains work automatically unless they go out of their way to not think in those patterns. Now, if some claim is fun to believe or it's something you want to be true, either because it's cool or it, it matches your beliefs or whatever, it's extra tempting to not wait around for any like evidentiary support. Just throw it in the category of, yeah, I totally believe that. Before you have any reason to actually think that it's true, other than, well, you heard somebody say it. Well, what if people are just making crap up? And by the way, people make crap up, and especially, like, they already made crap up going back centuries and centuries. In this day and age, there's a giant incentive for people to make crap up, um, even more so than before, and like I said, people have done it forever, because now if you want to get attention and likes and people clicking on your, you make up the out most outrageous thing you can. And whether it's true or not doesn't really matter. And so I'm sure you've all seen plenty of examples of, here's a picture of a 300 foot long snake eating a school bus. Oh my gosh, click. Instead of going, yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> Not how reality works, but the more outlandish and attention grabbing the claim is, the more likely people are to get attention to themselves and more specifically, ad revenue. And a lot of videos and claims and posts here and there are literally just to get ad revenue. So the claim being ridiculous and outlandish works. It get, gets lots of people to go, hey, did you hear? And so a process that I <laughs> encourage everyone to try to make themselves do on purpose is going through the thought, 
why do I think I know this? If somebody claims something, do you have any reason to think it's true? Now, maybe you trust them, but maybe they were wrong. Like maybe they're lying and being dishonest, but maybe they think they're telling the truth and they just trusted and believed somebody else and passed it on. Or maybe they misunderstood something and then passed it on and, and you're getting a fifth generation interpretation that now bears no resemblance to the truth. And people, this is true. I mean, this is this video kind of applies to people in general, but I'll get into why it, it, it has a special application to people in the freedom movement. But if people are unable to remain neutral and objective and agnostic in the face of some new claim, then they're completely unable to decide what's true and what isn't. And the irony is a lot of people want to jump on any claim. Hey, did you hear there were people that were 200 feet tall and were blah, 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 blah? because that makes them feel different and edgy and in the know. Like I heard about it before anybody else, so now I'll spread it all over the place. It's, it's the, the gossip routine. And not only does that not make you informed or enlightened or an open-minded thinking individual, it makes you the exact opposite. If you take a claim and quickly want to throw it into either category without bothering to find out if it's true first, then you're just a gullible dupe and nothing else, which is kind of sad. Now, at the same time, I want to emphasize again, I'm not saying distrust everybody. There are some people who think that the, the skeptical, rational thing is to disbelieve every claim until it's proven true. Well, that's just as stupid. <laughs> to, to take a claim and throw it in the category of, I think that's totally false and I'm going to assume it's totally false, is just as dumb. I'm not suggesting people do that. I'm suggesting people practice the rational process of hearing a claim and saying, I don't know if that's true. And as a general rule, people suck at that. <laughs> and pro-freedom people suck at it just as bad as everybody else does. And it's weird to watch. They can't just remain neutral. And by the way, neutral doesn't even mean there's a 50-50 chance. Like there, if my neighbor says, oh, there's Martians in my attic. I'm going to say, I don't know for sure whether that's true, kind of doubting it, <laughs> like pretty dang sure it's not true, but I mean, I don't all the way know for sure you don't have Martians in your attic, tend to doubt it, so it's not like I'm saying there's a 50-50 chance it's true, there's an entire spectrum between I know it's false and I know it's true, and well, I, I have no idea, or I kind of have a hunch it's true, but I don't really have proof. But people want to just make everything binary that, though it's either true and I believe it. And you can hear the way people talk about this too. They'll say, hey, did you hear such and such? And people, a lot of people will respond with, I believe that, or I don't believe that. And in hardly any cases do they have justification to say either one of those. The honest, rational answer to most new claims is, okay, I don't know if that's true. And the funny thing is people will be offended if you respond in the rational way, if you don't blindly fall for <laughs> BS the way they do. So they'll hear some claim going, have you heard that the earth is flat? Ah. And I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna trigger and, and offend lots of people in this video and guess whether I give a crap. Have you heard that the earth is flat? Yes, I've heard that and it isn't and I can prove it isn't. That's in the category for me of absolutely, totally, provably false and I have proven it myself and I've proven that it's spherical without having to trust NASA. Now the irony there is that those people absolutely always do the projecting thing of, oh, you just believed when literally their conclusion was based entirely on they just believed somebody. They didn't start objective and, and that's the thing is if you don't start objective then you're going to do the confirmation bias thing like if you hear a claim and go I want that to be true all right then you're already a crappy investigator you're a crappy detective because you have an outcome that you're trying to make happen you do the confirmation bias thing and any evidence that seems to support it you go well look at this well look at this and you know I've dealt with lots of flat earthers who do exactly this 
And if somebody points out, yeah, but here's very basic evidence you can look at yourself, you can see it yourself, you don't have to take anybody's word for it, and it completely demolishes the model that you believe in. Oh, well, I don't really care about evidence, because I, yeah, I, I believe this. I decided I believe this, I'm doubling down, I have an emotional psychological attachment to it, and I suck at being objective. That's every flat earth. And, and it isn't just flat earthers, it's, it's about all sorts of things. Okay, so let me just go down the list here and offend as many <laughs> categories of people as possible. When it comes to alternative medicine, I guess I'll use that term. Now, there's lots of, basically anything that isn't <laughs> crappy pharmaceuticals lands in the category of alternative medicine, which is kind of sad. Now, tons of it, I think, is totally valuable and worthwhile, and I think that from personal experience. Some of it, I think, well, that may do something. I don't really know. I haven't looked into it. A bunch of it, I think, eh, that's probably BS. And the sad thing is, if somebody, well, I'll give an example and you can be offended if you want. If somebody comes along and says, I got this crystal and I keep it in my room and it, it makes it so I don't feel whatever. Okay. If they want to know whether that's true, they don't start with, I'm going to blindly believe the guy who sold it to me, decide that it's true, and then go out of my way to try to look for evidence that supports my foregone conclusion. That's not how to test it. If you actually want to know if it's true, you do things like, uh, well, ultimately, you do a double-blind study. Now, in, in medicine and, and other things, um, a double-blind study is where, like, all right, there's a bunch of patients, they all have a certain problem or whatever, and we have this thing that may or may not give a certain benefit. So we're gonna randomly select some of these patients to get that treatment and randomly select others to get a placebo, which means it isn't anything. Um, and double blind means the ones administering the treatment don't know which ones are getting the real thing and which aren't, and the, and the patients don't know which ones are getting the real thing and aren't. And so they go through that, somebody else tallied up like which was in which bottle and which were really the, the treatment and which were nothing. And then they test and see, well, was there a statistically significant difference between the ones who got the treatment and the ones who didn't when nobody involved in the administering of the treatment knew who was getting it and who wasn't? Because if there's a statistically significant difference there, that's like that means that thing probably actually did something. How often do alternative medicines bother to go through that? Well, sometimes, but a lot of the times they don't. And unfortunately, a lot of the time that's because the people either promoting it and pushing it and selling it, or the people buying it who want to believe it's true, they don't want to know whether it's true. They don't want to actually objectively test whether it's true. Now, there's another whole factor to that, which is the placebo effect, which has been studied for years and years and years. Uh, a bunch of you, I'm sure, know what that is, but... Um, in short, if somebody thinks they got a treatment or a medicine or something that'll help them, a lot of people will feel better because they expect to feel better, not because they actually received anything. And doctors will still do that. They'll still do placebo effect if, you know, there's some little old lady who's like, oh, I have this, and they run a bunch of tests and they're like, we don't think anything's wrong with her. We think she's a little bit of a hypochondriac and think she has everything under the sun. So we'll give her some some non-existent, like basically sugar pills and tell her, oh, this will clear that right up. And a kind of surprising percentage of the time, people will go, oh, I felt much better. That thing really did the trick, doc. Well, he didn't give you anything. You just expected to feel better. So the fact that, that people are really bad reporters and their powers of observation are really easily biased and unreliable um, makes that <laughs> even more complicated to find out what's actually true. Now, at the same time, when people go, well, you claim that having that thing, you know, fixes this problem, but I don't believe it because that doesn't match the treatment I've heard of. So I'm going to decide it's wrong. That's just as stupid. Like, you don't know that it doesn't do something just because your level of understanding of how things work doesn't yet include an explanation of that. That's not how science works either. Science is you look at the data and try to figure out just from the data what's going on and, and cause and effect and, and things like that. 
And one fun example um, <laughs> that I heard is is lots of people said, no, my plants really do better when I talk to them on a daily basis. And like a bunch of people were like, that's utterly ridiculous. And I would have been like, mm, yeah, really? <laughs> Sounds unlikely. Um, and then at some point somebody did a study. I don't have the source on it. You can probably look it up and found that it did make the plants better. Now, pretty quickly, the, the, the leading theory was didn't have anything to do with the fact that you're talking to them. It had to do with the fact that you're breathing on them. And we exhale carbon dioxide, which plants thrive on. And most of the time they don't get enough of like as much as people are like, carbon footprint, we're all going to die. We're actually at the low end of carbon in our atmosphere that makes plants happy. For millions of years, it was way, way, way higher and plants were thriving all over the whole planet. Um, and if you think this is like controversial, like look up CO2 pumps that people who have greenhouses, they pile in extra CO2 because it makes the plants happier. Well, if you're standing in front of your plant and breathing extra CO2 on it in an environment which is otherwise kind of low on that, lower than the plants would like, then your plants might do better. And so, but you're not gonna figure that out. You're not gonna learn that if you dismiss evidence because it sounds weird. Like you're talking to your plants. And, and if, if you think that, well, no, I think like our energies and our whatever, if you think it isn't just that, you can do a st study, all right. You spend five minutes a day talking to your plants up close and telling them how awesome they are and beautiful they are. And you, you spend, we'll have the same plants, same setup. You spend five minutes a day telling your plants how much they suck and they're worthless, and, but still talk to them that far away. And if it turns out they both thrive better, maybe it had nothing to do with your words. It's just because you're breathing on them. If it turns out the ones you said nice things to are doing better, okay, that would be weird. <laughs> but that would be the result of like an actual study. And most people don't do that. They want to jump to deciding whether they think something is true or not. And as a result, they don't know anything because you don't know something until you hear the claim, you start by being neutral or agnostic, and then you examine it and you apply evidence and logic and go, well, does this actually match? Is there a way to test this claim? Is it falsifiable? It's one of the basic things in, in science is if there's a claim that you can't disprove, like there's no way to disprove it, well then, you know, it's kind of impossible to, to <laughs> determine its validity because there's no way to determine its invalidity. Um, but I'm not, I'm not here to give a <laughs> lecture on all the laws of logic. But <clears throat> here's the biggest problem to me, because if somebody wants to believe the earth is flat, I'll sort of make fun of them. I, I think it's a little bit sad because they're falling for a psyop um, that's designed to make truth seekers look like idiots. And what's so ironic is they're like, we didn't fall for anything. We're in the know. You just believe NASA, but we're in the know. Because they really think that those in power are clever enough to trick the whole world into thinking it's spherical when really it's flat. But somehow they're not clever enough to trick flat earthers into falling for a stupid psyop that makes them look gullible and ignorant. Like... <laughs> They think they're in the know when they're the ones who absolutely fell for the conspiratorial lie that is being pushed recently to try to make that happen. Anyway, you can argue about that all you want. The problem with that approach isn't just that people believe weird, stupid things, because whatever. Like if you, you know, if you're nice to other people and you live and let live and you believe in self-ownership, you can believe whatever the hell you want about alternative medicines and, and the shape of the planet and whatever. The trouble is when people are in the habit and in that pattern of you hear a claim and you want to throw it into the category of I don't believe that or I believe that, that is one of the biggest obstacles to the truth getting out. Because I think there's a lot of really weird things that there is evidence for, and it's really weird, and I don't understand them, and I don't have an explanation, but they're worth looking into. I'll use the example of, of ancient cultures, because there's a lot of people really into that, and 
the symbolism in the different cultures and the fact that there are different cultures all over the world which have carvings of similar symbols, which like I, and again, I know hardly anything about it, but they're similar enough that, that makes me raise an eyebrow. Like did, I, I thought, aren't we sort of running on the assumption that people didn't have communication all over the globe back then? Why are they always, why are they all in like four corners of the globe? Not literally flat earthers. <laughs> why are they carving the same things? And what is it? And so there's lots of weird things like that that I think are worth looking into with an all the way open mind. But an all the way open mind isn't, it was aliens. And it's not, oh, that's nothing. It's, I don't know what that is. And if you're not starting with, I don't know, you're not an investigator. You're an advocate. Like if you decide that's totally true or that's totally false, you become an advocate for your conclusion that you had no reason to reach. And the reason I complain about that, the whole reason for this whole video, is because that is the biggest obstacle to the truth getting out. The problem with this way of thinking, when people hear a claim and double down on it, is that that gets in the way of people finding the actual truth because you're not, you're not an investigator, you're an advocate for whatever you decided to believe based on not enough evidence. And that gets in the way of actual cool weird things being actually investigated and analyzed and thought about and in both directions. If somebody says that evidence, that data is too weird, I'm going to pretend it's not there. Well, that's not rational. That's not pro-truth. And if somebody goes, oh, I heard, I saw something weird, I didn't, it's aliens. Well, you don't know that. <laughs> not from that. You have to sort of look into it. So people's inability to remain agnostic and neutral and objective until they have a reason to actually decide if they think it's true or not is a gigantic obstacle to people learning true, cool things. Now, when it comes to like ancient civilizations, well, whatever, like if people know how to peacefully coexist and stuff and accept self-ownership and like I don't care what other stuff they believe or disbelieve, like we can get along fine. Trouble is, it actually gets people in trouble to think this way and it obfuscates the truth um, in a whole bunch of categories, but what I'm particularly focused on here is when it comes to things relating to freedom. And I have a whole lot of personal experience when it comes to the tax honesty movement, and which I was sort of kind of a part of, reluctantly, like didn't want to put myself in that, that label, but I was sort of associated with it for a long time, many years ago. And the, I concluded in the middle of that, that the biggest obstacle to the truth is truth seekers who aren't really. They want something to be true. And they hear somebody say, did you know that the income tax is voluntary? Oh, hey, everybody, did you know the income tax is voluntary? Let's all spread it. The income tax is voluntary. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I looked into it to see if there was evidence behind the claim where lots of people just decided, that sounds cool, I'm gonna believe it. I want it to be true. I'm gonna repeat it to everybody else as if it is. So it spreads far and wide, despite there being no basis to it. Well, this bureaucrat over there happened to use the word voluntary. Why do you think that has any legal significance whatsoever? It doesn't. And the statutes and regulations don't say it's voluntary at all because it isn't. And people say, well, it's all governed by the UCC. And if your name is in all caps, that's really a corporation they made up. You need to reclaim your straw man. Like, absolute bullshit start to finish. And I'm only saying that because I looked into it. Because instead of saying that must be false or that must be true, I started with, I don't know which that is. I'm going to look into it. And that particular thing is a giant, a steaming pile of absolute bull crap. There is no truth to any of it. The UCC is basically a standardized way to have state law from state to state match when it comes to, to people selling stuff and like contracts and relating to that. It doesn't limit federal law at all. It doesn't even technically count as a federal law. It's like a uniform code that a bunch of states have adopted. 
And so the people say, oh, when your name is in all capitals, show me anything anywhere in the law that ever gives any support to the claim that that matters. They're really creating a corporation. This is when people can just make crap up and sell it and make lots of money and people believe it because they want it to be true. That is what I object to because that actually hurts people. And it wasn't that long ago up in Utah where somebody with sovereign citizen license plates and whatever ended up getting shot and killed. They got pulled over and they got shot and killed. Now, do they have a moral obligation to get permission from the state to drive? No. The, the state is inherently bogus and illegitimate and immoral and the state was the aggressor. But when people think they have some legalese voodoo trick to get out of being harassed by the parasites, but it's based on a total lie, that who's, who is that helping? It's not doing anybody any good. And that happens a lot. And I found that going through the tax honesty movement that most of the theories were totally bogus. Did you know the 16th Amendment was never properly ratified? Well, that is debatable and it doesn't matter in the slightest. And the Supreme Court has said so over and over and over again. 16th Amendment did not alter the taxing power in any way, shape or form. And it, if you want, if you care about this actual issue, you can go look at my book, Kicking the Dragon, because it has my whole taxable income report that actually explains it and shows citation after citation for every single claim I make. Cites things from the actual law, not, well, here's the definition and I'm just going to add a bunch of narration to that and a big pile of baseless assertions and want you to believe me. So the weird thing to me is I went through the, the tax honesty movement, one claim after another, I found to be just BS. They're just wrong, legally wrong. Now, morally, government has no right to steal from you, period, the end. But if people are pretending to have found something in the law that isn't really there, like how does that help? The irony is I then heard about another claim started looking into it, assumed, oh, they're taking something out of context like they always do. They're misrepresenting something like they always do every single freaking time. Um, and I started to look into it and go, oh, okay, well, the law does say that, but still, and the regulations do say that. And then I went back in time. I was like, and it did say that before. Wow, it was even more obvious back here. And holy smokes. So by starting neutral, in fact, I started leaning in the direction of this, probably is wrong, just like the last dozen theories I've heard from the tax honesty movement. And I found that, holy crap, it's not wrong. That's really weird. And I looked in and I found the evidence. And then I wrote a big long report and showed all my, what I had found and quoting from the statutes and regulations going back literally a hundred years. So, and I'm not going to get into that now, but the, the point is when people are quick to disbelieve or believe something based on what they assume to be true or what they expect to be true or what they want to be true, that is a giant obstacle to the truth getting out. I think the reason that everybody doesn't know the, the, the fraud and the lie actually connected with the federal income tax and how they've misrepresented it is the tax honesty movement that threw out so much noise and throw much, so much BS that anybody looking into the issue, like, oh, I hear claims that it's unconstitutional or it was never really this, that, or something or other. That when people look into it, they find so much noise, they go, this all sounds like BS, I'm leaving, and they never get to the part that, that actually matches the law, which was like <laughs> really damn frustrating to me. And it does that this pattern of thought does that in all sorts of ways, not just the, the tax issue um, and patriot mythology of, oh, if you file this thing and do this, they'll leave you alone. Yeah, unless they don't and they kick your door down, drag you away and put you in a cage. Now, people have the right to resist any way they want, but thinking that there's some gobbledygook documents or magic words you can use that suddenly the ruling class is going to go, oh, we're just going to pretend you're free. No, there isn't. Um, there is the fact that often if somebody seems to be too annoying a target, the bullies who wear badges will decide, uh, I'm going to go harass an easier target. Sometimes that happens. Doesn't make any difference whether your theory is right. 
if somebody pulls you over and they're like, oh God, this is just going to drag out and be this big annoying thing. I, I'm going to go write somebody else a ticket instead. That happens. And if somebody is like bombarding them with BS paperwork in the court system, sometimes the the people who are the, the authoritarian psychos who are going after them just drop it because they don't want the trouble. Like, okay. And then sadly, people go, see, that proves I was right. No, it doesn't. It proves you were annoying, which in that case, good for you. You were annoying to a bunch of parasites to the point that they're like, ah, I'm going to go harass somebody else. And by the way, I've talked to, to former cops who acknowledge if they meet somebody who's going to spew all this stuff, they know it's going to be a pain in the neck and they may just like, oh, I'll give you a warning and uh, I don't want to deal with that. I want an easier victim. And that doesn't mean the person's right. I mean, if, if you manage to not get robbed <laughs> from by some cop, okay, good for you. Doesn't mean you were right, but yay. And like, I'm happy about the outcome of you not being robbed by parasites. <clears throat> but <clears throat> when people are eager to believe something, and sometimes it's a mistake and sometimes it's not. Sometimes people are selling stuff to make money and they're selling stuff to gullible people knowing full well those people want a way towards freedom and they want there to be a procedural solution and they lie about stuff. Um, one really glaring example is I've seen people in the freedom movement quote a, some lower court case that said uh, performing services and billing for them does not constitute income. <gasps> Subject to the tax. Yay, look at this. Yeah, earning a living is an income. And Lots of people are like, look, quote, I'll quote it. Look, everybody, I'll quote it. See, it's true, it's true. I want it to be true. I'm sticking it in the category of my brain that says it's true and I'm gonna tell everybody else it's true. Well, we do have the internet, you know. You can look up cases to see if they say that. And about 70% of the time, I see patriot mythology quoting cases. And if you look up the case, they just made the quote up. It's not there at all. In this case, the quote was there. It really did say that. The case was about somebody who in one year performed services and billed for them, but they didn't get paid until the next year. And whether it was some state taxing agency or the IRS, they said, hey, we're gonna, <laughs> we looked at all your bills and we decided you owe this much. And the person was saying, well, yeah, I sent the bill, but I didn't get paid till the next year. You can't tax me for that year on something I didn't get. And the court said, logically and rationally, performing services and sending something, someone a bill doesn't constitute income, you didn't get paid yet. And anybody who looked at that ruling and looked at like the next sentence would go, oh, they're not saying that getting paid for doing work is an income. They're saying billing for work and not getting paid is an income, duh. So whoever's spreading that around is either really bad at reading or a total liar, probably the latter. But there's so much of this that if people don't pause to think, never mind what I wish were true and how much I want this to be the case, is it true? And this is true of, of, of conspiracy theory stuff too. There are, there are tons of conspiracies that are totally real. They're not theories anymore. Um, where nasty authoritarian psychos have done just heinously horrible things and have conspired to do that. We just had several years of a very glaring example of that. But if people, if pro-freedom people are too eager to believe conspiracies and they hear somebody say, did you know that the government is secretly doing this thing? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go tell everybody. Well, do you have any reason to think that's true? You might have a reason to think, well, yeah, they're totally capable of that. And that would be my response. Like, yeah, they're evil enough to do almost anything you could think of. But are they that competent? And did they actually do that? And the thing is, this can be used against you because if you fall for a conspiracy and you spread it all over the place and then it turns out to be provably false, you look like a dumbass. Even though you had reason to be suspicious of the psychos in power, but you just accidentally, because of your eagerness to jam that, that claim into one category or another, I totally believe it because I want it to be true, you just allowed them to use you as an example of those silly conspiracy theorists who just fall for anything and they want to believe the worst, but here we have proof that blah, 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 and that was totally wrong. And then you made an ass of yourself. 
And by the way, I think the Clintons uh, were very good at doing this, spreading rumors about themselves that weren't actually true. Like, there's a lot of nasty stuff that either was obviously true or it seems like it may have some merit. But on several occasions, and I remember this, I thought, I think they spread that knowing it could later be disproven so they could go, yeah, you see our critics? They're just so eager to be the you know, believe the worst about us. And really, we're good people and we're just trying to help everybody. And it would only work if people were quick to believe it and eager to believe it and repeat it all over the place and then find out, no, that was provably false. And now you look stupid and gullible. So that when something comes out that was actually real and you say, well, here's this, everyone's going to go, ah, again, really? Another thing you fell for? And you'll be the boy who cried wolf. (laughs) <laughs> Nobody's going to believe you. So that's that's why I care about this, and that's why I talk about this. Now, do I have any hope that most people are going to change how they think? Not really. Because <laughs> it takes an effort. And, uh, like, I know some people who are, I think, are pretty dang objective and neutral, but they acknowledge that it takes an effort to keep your brain from just going, that's probably true, that's probably false, instead of going, I don't know. And you can, again, you can see it in the way people talk. When somebody says, did you know that if you take a spoonful of this, it'll cure this? Well, no, and I still don't know that. I know that you said that to me. I suspect that you believe that. And that isn't a reason for me to believe it because I'm not here determining reality by deciding who to trust. I'm determining reality as well as I can, as often as I can, by actually analyzing the evidence instead of by jumping to any conclusion in any direction. And unfortunately, people don't do that. Now, on occasion, there is, like if you have to actually make a decision and do something, like half the people are, you know are saying, you definitely need to go get this treatment right away because uh, scary things are happening and this treatment's really important for you to get. And the other half are saying, don't get that treatment, it's really bad for you. And it's like, well, you have to do one or the other. You're either going to get it or you're not. And so sometimes you have to do the the sad, very imperfect approach of, well, who do I trust? Like, if you don't have time to spend hundreds of hours researching things, which one of these people am I going to, like, let my actions be guided by what they told me? And then you may be stuck having to trust somebody. But if it's not something you have to make a decision of on the spot, make it a practice to stay agnostic and neutral about all sorts of things. Because the honest answer from most people to most questions is, I don't know. But people suck at saying that. They suck at admitting that. They want to pretend they know everything. And this is not just among the ignorant people. Supposed scientists and doctors do the same thing. And we have like hundreds of years of history of this. No, we know how everything works. Well, what about the thing that two years ago you admitted you were totally wrong about? Oh yeah, well, we were wrong about that. But now we know how everything works. What about that other thing a week ago that you all thought was completely different and now you, oh, well yeah, there was that. But now we know how, no, you stink it down. And the experts do it just as much as everybody else because it's a human nature thing of we want to categorize things into that's true and that's false instead of where most things belong is I don't know yet. I haven't looked into it enough to know yet. And so anyway, that's that. (laughs) That's just a pet peeve of mine because so many people are so bad at that, including really intelligent people. Because this tendency doesn't, it seems to be independent of intelligence and education, the desire to want to jump to a conclusion. Like the people who say, there's no such thing as Bigfoot. How would you pretend to know that? Have you like been to the Pacific Northwest and roamed the woods there? Do you know how big they are? Do you know how many planes, entire planes, are lost in the Pacific Northwest because they crashed and we never found them? If you can lose a plane where you know where it was and you know where it was headed and you know it crashed and you still couldn't find it, there's pretty much room in there for there to maybe be things we don't know about. Now, do I think there is? Uh, I've never seen one. 
Um, the Roger Tory Patterson footage, that's pretty amazing. It doesn't really look to me like a person in a suit. Lots of other stuff looks completely fake. I don't stinking know. So in my brain, that's in the category of I don't stinking know. Maybe I kind of sort of think, maybe I kind of sort of think is fine. But to say, yes, there totally is, or no, there totally isn't, until you actually have a basis to think that, that, I mean, this is going to sound melodramatic, that makes you an enemy of the truth. Because you become an advocate for whatever you arbitrarily decided to believe, and you will be an advocate of that against people who remain neutral until they have evidence and are actually trying to find out. As... You know, few and far between as though those people may be. There are some who are trying to find the truth. And they have to wade through all the noise, mostly spread by people who have no reason to believe it or disbelieve it, but who become very sure of themselves and say, no, this is totally the case. And I'm going to, you know, verbally pummel anybody who doesn't agree and say, you're just a shit and you're duped and you blah, blah, blah. And if they ask, well, could I see your evidence? Rear, rear, here it is. Wait, your evidence sucks. Your evidence is some other video of some other guy asserting it. That's not how evidence works. And uh, so it's it's frustrating. And again, I don't think this is going to change anybody's way of thinking anyway. But I will ask you, I will beg of you all. And I. it still takes an effort for me. Like it's it takes an effort for everybody I know who actually does this. Because you hear something and you want to think that's true or that's false and be done with it. Not, oh, here's another thing I have to put in the category of, uh, I don't know. Start making it a habit to put lots more things in the category of, I don't know. And don't repeat them to other people if you don't know. You can have a discussion. It's like, well, I heard somebody say this, but I'm not sure about this. And have the discussion. But it's so sad. And when it comes to... Uh, especially when it comes to pro-freedom people, where there's conspiracies that are provably wrong and they're out spreading them and making fools of themselves and taking away from the conspiracies that are obviously real and easily provable and a bunch in between that, well, we can't all the way prove it, but it sure looks suspicious. To think in those patterns makes you a noise generator that's getting in the way of people finding out the actual truth. So, all right, I will end with this challenge. See if for one week, <laughs> it would probably be enough of a challenge if I said for one hour, see if for one whole week, you don't repeat to anybody any claim you hear unless and until you do enough research into the actual evidence, the raw data, to find out if it's actually true first. And the thing is, people like to gossip and they like to think they're in the know. It's why there's a multi-billion dollar tabloid industry. Because they like to do that. But that's not thinking. That's not knowing. That's not being enlightened. That's blindly believing crap and repeating it like a parrot. <laughs> Gossiping parrot. So I challenge everybody for the next week, don't hear any claim and pass it to anybody else unless you analyze it. So most of the claims you'll have to just go, well, I'm not going to forward that to anybody else because I don't know if it's true. But if there's one that you actually want to look into, all the way look into it. And what you'll find is you won't be repeating nearly as much. You won't have as much fun doing the gossip thing and the in the know thing. Hey, have you heard that blah, 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 blah? Yeah, I have. That doesn't mean it's true. It just means that's the thing people like to talk about. So... It may ruin your gossip game, but you may also notice how other people respond when you don't blindly believe what they blindly believed. And you'll see the destructive power of that thought process. If somebody you know says, did you know that if you have this crystal, it removes all the blah, 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 blah? And you say, okay, I don't know if that's true. A lot of people will get offended if you don't just take their word for it. And those people don't know how to think. <laughs> Fortunately, that's most people. Like, even if you researched it and know it, that doesn't mean I did. And you saying it's true doesn't mean I have a reason to think it's true yet. And rational people can understand that and can have discussions about it. And the gossip committee are the only ones who are gonna get all huffy 
if you question and say, I'm not sure I believe your conclusion, what's your evidence? If they take that as a personal attack, when you ask for evidence, you might want to find other people <laughs> to talk to. So that's my challenge. See if instead of gossiping for a week, you can only repeat things that you personally have confirmed to be accurate or inaccurate. As, uh, and I know it's a challenge. It's a challenge for me to do it. And I still catch myself thinking that's probably true. Uh, but do I actually know it is? So anyway, that ends this rant. And I'm going to go back to seeing people in the freedom movement spreading things all over the place that are either provably false or they don't nearly have enough of a basis to actually believe it. But it's getting thrown out there and making piles and piles of noise so that the things that are confirmably true can't ever reach the surface and be heard and understood and known by the people who need to hear them and understand them and know them. And it's a little bit frustrating. Yeah.